with AMD's Ryzen 5000 Zen 3 coming out at any moment now, which are going to be the best motherboards that you can choose for it. I'm going to tell you the ones that I think are going to be the greatest, as well as some reasons why you should choose a 500 series motherboard. Let's get started. Hey guys, Tiago with Classical Technology here. Remember to smash that like button, subscribe if you like the content. All right, so Zen 3 or Ryzen 5000 gonna be coming out November 5th. So what are gonna be the best motherboards that you can use with this new Zen 3 architecture? Now let's talk about a very important thing. These are gonna be completely new chips. So that means not every motherboard is gonna be compatible. So what will be compatible? First, right out of the gate, if you have a 500 series motherboard, that that's going to be anything from X570, B550, and A520. As long as you have a fairly recent BIOS update, you will be able to pretty much just drop in the new CPUs and they're going to work without any problems. With the Ryzen 400 series motherboards such as X470, B450, eventually you will be able to use Zen 3 uh, CPUs with them, the Ryzen 5000, but at the initial launch, which is going to be in November, you will not yet be able to use these motherboards. They're basically going to come out with a beta BIOS update early 2021 according to AMD and remember these are going to be selective beta BIOS updates so that means not every motherboard will actually work even if it's a 400 series there's no guarantee it's going to be down to the individual motherboard as well as the manufacturer to choose which one will work so having said that of course anything below the 400 series flat out won't work with Zen 3 and Ryzen 5000 so anything like an X370 you will have to upgrade so so having said that, we are going to focus on the 500 series motherboards today. We're going to talk about the highest end motherboards as well as the mid-range motherboards. We'll leave the budget motherboards for a separate video because as you guys know, AMD is pretty much announcing and releasing first their better and faster SKUs. For example, the Ryzen 5600X at 299 is going to be sort of their cheaper Ryzen 5 at least for now. Then you have the 5800X, 59 and 5950X. So these are pretty much much going to be the top CPUs for now. Later on, they will be announcing the 5600 and whatever comes below it. So that's why I think it makes more sense to talk about these motherboards that are a little bit more high end. That way, whenever the more budget CPUs come out, we'll address that separately in the video as well. All right, so let's get started. The first category, let's just get this one out of the way. This is going to be the very highest end motherboards. And I'm going to try to talk about actual motherboards I have experience with. Not everybody will want to buy these motherboards. And you certainly do not need them to be able to run Ryzen 5000. You can certainly get away with much cheaper boards. The first one that I'm going to talk about, if you're going to be going for something like a 5950X and you want the best of the best, something like an MSI X570 Godlike certainly is chock full of features. Now, let me make this very clear. It's a very expensive motherboard, certainly not for everyone, but it does have a very interesting feature set that if you're in the market for a motherboard like this, I think you're going to know. So somebody who's spending $600 plus on a motherboard like this, what are some of the attractive features that would get them to get it aside from a much cheaper motherboard? Well, first of all, some of the things that you get, you will get a 10 gig networking card. If you know that you're doing 10 gigabit networking, maybe within your business or your, your house, that way, it's much faster transfer speeds if you have like a 10 gigabit NAS or you have other systems or like free NAS or something like that. Anybody who's used this knows that you can transfer considerably faster. And of course, you can always get 10 gigabit cards separately and add them to whatever computer or motherboard that you have. But the motherboard does come with it included. It's not part of the actual motherboard. It's a little add-in card that you do get separately. But it is a little bonus. You don't have to spend that money on something else. And it's part of what makes the feature set of this motherboard more interesting. You do get a pretty neat M.2 add-in card. You can fit two separate NVMe M.2 SSDs and put them right into the PCIe slot. Now, this motherboard does have a lot of NVMe drives natively on the motherboard itself already. But if you're somebody buying this motherboard, you may need multiple NVMe's. In fact, in the system that I have with this motherboard, I filled up all of the slots and I do occasionally also use that PCIe add-in slot. It does have a few drawbacks with sort of the speed that it can run compared to what else you you have in your system but if you're just running a single gpu or something like that you should be fine but that's definitely something else future wise that this motherboard will include 
And then of course, aside from those features, in general, a motherboard that's this expensive, like the X570 Godlike, is gonna have very beefy VRMs and cooling. It's just gonna be great for overclocking, have a lot of great features. I'm never a big fan of motherboard software, so I'll leave that out. I never like using sort of the native motherboard software of any sort of manufacturer, not only MSI, but not Asus or anything like that. I always just feel it's a little clunky. I'd rather you either use like a third party software to control fans or just go directly into the BIOS if I want to do any overclocking or something like that. But overall, this is certainly a very unique motherboard. It certainly is pretty expensive. So if you don't need most of these features, I would just get something like the X570 Ace, which is considerably cheaper. It does most of the stuff that this motherboard does, including the performance is pretty close. Um, it doesn't have some of the feature set, of course, as this motherboard. But in general, if you don't specifically need exactly what this more expensive godlike motherboard is offering, I would aim you in the direction of something like the MSI Ace if you do want to stay with MSI of course. And of course if you still want some type of extreme motherboard but not MSI, Asus also has their extreme version as does Gigabyte and the same thing will certainly apply to them. They're usually much more expensive. Overall you're going to get better overclocking capabilities and of course you are going to get more features than you would on a cheaper motherboard. But in general I think you can be well served by getting a motherboard almost half the price for a lot of these features because remember especially x570 motherboards certainly jumped up in price significantly another motherboard that's slightly cheaper but still pretty expensive that's going to be something like the x570 asus formula now the hero is almost like the formula but what the formula does is it's going to give you water cooling for your vrms so this is going to be a motherboard that i would only use specifically if you're going to be water cooling your new system this is really cool because then you can do all sorts of intricate connections between the vrms and your cpu you. you could also leave them empty if you wanted but it's sort of a waste i think you should use it it's going to give you better vrm temperatures but most importantly it's going to look really cool when you water cool it it's going to make it unique that's basically the biggest draw of something like the formula over something like the x570 hero which is going to have pretty much most of the feature sets of the formula aside from that vrm cooling so you do certainly pay a premium for that um, the x570 hero as well as the strix e are other great motherboards that i've used in the past now, when you're looking at them and comparing, you'll see the Hero is a little bit more tricked out. So you kind of have to go aesthetically which one you like better. You see if one has a little bit more of the features that you need. Most of them are going to be pretty close around this price limit. So I would just choose sort of based on your budget. They're all going to perform really well with the Ryzen 5000 CPUs. And then some other nice mid-range motherboards that I've tried. That's going to be the Gigabyte Aorus X570 Master. Um, I actually used this a while back with a 3800 x but of course being x570 it's going to work perfectly fine with the new ryzen cpus um, now this motherboard it's not too expensive you can find it anywhere from like the 350 to 370 range i thought it looked great had a lot of great features performed really well and in fact paying that price for it it's, it was at the same time that i had the msi x570 godlike i even felt a little bit like i overpaid possibly for the msi godlike just because something that was like half the price had most of the features of course it didn't have some of the special features and maybe it does have a little bit less performance capability but when we're talking about motherboards and especially with these ryzen chips that usually don't overclock extremely high anyway it really doesn't make that big of a difference so certainly the x570 the aorus master is a fantastic motherboard if you go down a little bit cheaper usually underneath 200 dollars they do have their aorus elite um, even during prime day this actually was on sale for pretty cheap i think around like 150 bucks the wi-fi version is back up to 200 dollars but if you're on a bit of a budget this is certainly one that can really fit in. Um, another more budget X570 motherboard, or at least budget compared to the other ones, the Asus Prime motherboard for X570. Now, I used this and I thought it looked fine. It even has a nice little like white design on it if you're doing a white theme. The only thing that I didn't like about this motherboard was that Wi-Fi wasn't included. And most X570 motherboards do have Wi-Fi 6. So if that's something important to you, just make sure when you're buying the motherboard, make sure that it actually comes included with Wi-Fi. Wi-Fi 6. If not, you're going to have to do some type of add-in card, and they do have PCIe add-in cards for Wi-Fi 6 now. If you have a Wi-Fi 6 router, the performance is certainly considerably better than it was before, and for a lot of people, it may actually be able to replace like an Ethernet wired connection. Usually gamers would never touch Wi-Fi before, but certainly it's gotten better and better, I think to the level where latency is low enough and the connection seems stable enough that you could actually even competitively play games without having to worry too much. So if your mother 
keyboard has to have Wi-Fi 6. Make sure you read on the box or, or on the description because not all of them come with it. And this Asus Prime A motherboard certainly was one that that was one of the missing features of it. That's probably why it's a little bit cheaper as well. And now let's quickly talk about B550 motherboards. Now, if you don't necessarily want to spend a little bit extra money for an X570 motherboard, should you get a B550? Are there any major differences? For the most part, no. And some of the higher end B550 boards certainly are pretty close in price to some of the more mid-range and lower end X570 motherboards. Probably the biggest difference is going to be concerning PCIe Generation 4. Now, while B550 will also have PCIe Generation 4, um, it's going to be limited in the amount of PCIe lanes that it has compared to X570, but it should still be enough for something like a GPU that will support PCIe Generation 4. I know there was a lot of talk about this with RTX 3000 series that do support PCIe Generation 4. Currently, there really isn't enough of a difference to make it worth it over Generation 3. If you do want to future-proof yourself a bit, there certainly may be more and more of a difference that can be made, but primarily right now, let's say if you're doing a workstation or even if you're a gamer that you want to have a lot of PCIe Generation 4 um, NVMe drives, you want to have a PCIe Generation 4 GPU, X570 is going to be your choice because you're going to saturate all of those PCIe lanes a lot faster on B550. It's just not nearly as feature packed and robust as something um, from X570 and of course another big difference is that X570 really is meant to be the higher end sort of platform so you will get higher and higher motherboards if your budget allows for it but if you're budget constrained and you do want to save a few bucks I think at least B550 will give you the path to immediately use the new Zen 3 um, CPUs you can certainly get something like the Asus Strix on B550 just remember you're going to have maybe a little less PCIe lanes compared to X570 but if you you just want something a straightforward in game it's going to be able to handle ryzen 3 cpus and even nvidia's rtx 3000 without any issues at all and you'll likely never really see any type of performance detriment from b550 to x570 until you really start getting to the very high-end x570 motherboards and then you start to maybe overclock or use a lot of pcie lanes that's where you're going to see most of the impact the same holds true when you're going from something like x570 to maybe threadripper that's when more pc PCIe lanes really come into play, but that's going to be something really not for the casual gamer for the purposes of our discussion here. In general, if you find a good priced B550 motherboard, a lot of the X570 will have a version in B550, like the Asus Strix is a great motherboard. We also have the Aorus Master as well, very good motherboard. And remember, they start to get a little bit closer in price to the X570 variants. So certainly if you have a little more budget, I would just get the X570 just to make sure you have a little bit more room in the in case you want to expand with PCIe lanes in the future or something like that. But in general, at least in terms of being able to run Zen 3, you'll be more than fine with B550. So in general, the main thing that you should know now, if you want to get a Zen 3 Ryzen 5000 CPU, I would recommend getting a 500 series motherboard. That's the first step you need to take. If you're only getting a Zen 3 in the future, you should be fine with most of the well-known 400 series motherboards, but keep in mind the BIOS update to make them compatible with the Zen 3 is only going to be coming in early 2021, so you would have to wait. But if you're going to get the new CPU upgrade now at the end of this year, after it comes out, you should be looking at the 500 series motherboard then basically it just comes down to your budget like we mentioned high end i would go for x570 you don't have to go for the really high end motherboards those are very very like a niche item almost like the rtx 3090 something like the msi godlike or even the asus extreme but i would consider more reasonable high-end motherboards the one that fall between maybe three to four hundred dollars that's going to be something like the asus strix sin hero maybe the gigabyte Aorus master maybe the msi ace those are all going to be really feature-packed motherboards. They're going to perform really close to the very high-end motherboards while still being fairly reasonably priced. And of course, in the $200 range, you do have some B550 options as well. You're only going to be losing on a few PCIe lanes. For most gamers, these should be more than enough to run the new Zen 3 CPUs, so even if you're pairing it with something like an RTX 3070 or 3080. I do plan to update and do more motherboard videos in the future when Zen 3 finally launches, and later on, I'll see if there are new motherboards available and we'll also see the lower end of the ryzen 5000 SKUs when they start releasing something like the ryzen 5600 and we'll certainly have more budget friendly options for that as well to discuss all right guys so i hope you enjoyed the video remember to smash that like button subscribe and i'll see you guys on the next video